Hello, I'm Michael for GameWatcher.com and welcome to our Europa Universalis 4 Rights of Man review. Rights of Man is the latest DLC package coming from Paradox Interactive. Now, Paradox have really tried to push the envelope on what Europa was originally envisioned as. The grand strategy started out as being the go-to game for a cross between historical simulation and strategy. One of the major issues with players were faced with very early on was the fact that while the game offered a wide range of choice in terms of who to play, the confines of certain time periods meant that should you not play as the superpower of the time, or at least one of them, winning the game became a series of compromises rather than a total domination. All of the game's systems such as technology progression and in-game events were so closely tied to that of what actually happened in history that it meant that any faction that was not at the forefront of that time period had to be played completely differently to its inherent nature. Having to westernize Eastern Asia or a minor African faction in order to advance the game pretty much broke immersion for those players and left very few options of progression available to you. The Right of Man DLC centers around the idea of personality and the great superpowers. In the past, leaders of countries were left to be little more than figureheads in the game and they didn't really contribute in any meaningful way or have an impact on the overall experience. Right of Men appears to be that boost of character for the game that it really, really needed. By no means has Europa ever been a bad game, and in fact, it is a game that consistently overwhelms me to this day in terms of how in-depth the strategy elements are, and how many options and micromanagement options are simply available to you. What Right of Men sets to put right, however, is the what the original mechanics lack, and make some additions to some certain systems and make things a lot clearer. By any stretch, the new expansion opens up the game more than ever before. First, with the new Great Powers mechanic. Now, this allows the options for superpowers of the age to have more diplomatic options. So if you become one of the leading forces in the world, once you did that in the previous game, you were devoid of any real leverage other than military might. With the Great Powers mechanic, a new line of diplomatic options are available so you can throw your weight around and affect change in different things through diplomacy. My favourite content with the new expansion is, without a doubt however, the new personality and trait system for leaders. Rulers will now, over time, gain traits that will affect your empire in some form. I chose to play through as England, and Henry Tudor decided that one day he was going to have a pleasant nervous breakdown, and he became mad, meaning that he would regularly throw insults to our neighbouring nations, which would direct directly affect my diplomatic relations status with those nations. The new trade system really adds that little bit of character that the game was otherwise lacking. The problem with the new trade system, however, is that it is entirely randomised. Now, don't get me wrong, it's certainly fun and it adds a lot of flavour, but the totally randomised nature can put you in a precarious position if you have a run of bad luck with leaders. It's a shame that leaders don't pick up traits through action like other games have them do. For example, if you have King Henry attached to your army and you win a great victory, then you would gain a trait, and that isn't the case in Europa. In other games, that is the case, and it's something that I felt was lacking in the trait system. One of the welcome additions to rulers is the importance of queens. Queens can now rule if their heir to the throne is not of age, which makes the experience much more closer to the reality of history. Mechanically, it provides a fix for a more fluid gameplay experience, because you no longer have to wait until your heir comes of age when your ruler dies too early so you're able to actually do things again instead you now have queens take their place and queens and you can get on and rule your empire whichever way you see fit rights of men does add big changes to religion and the way religion is used in the game not only more religions have been added and sub religions but they better reflect the multitude of the religions at the time, and each can directly affect the other. So variants of 
Christianity, for example, can pick up traits from another forming a cult tradition. So if you have a Christianity tribe in Africa and you're playing as the African nation and you have a certain Christianity and you're neighboring another Christian nation who do things slightly differently, your followers can pick up certain traits from the other type of Christianity and they become cult traditions. Now, smaller, less noticeable changes have also taken place to religions. For example, certain countries have specific new mechanics that help them feel more historically accurate. For example, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire can now dictate which religion the empire is going to be a part of, which is historically accurate. All of the changes to the religion system, however, cultivate into a singular experience and it is more unique, more accessible and ultimately more interesting. The multitude of changes that have occurred with this expansion is means that it's a definite must for new players and old players. The improvements and additions are useful to everybody. The changes made to diplomacy and religions allow for a much more in-depth experience and the trait system allows for that sense of character and it helps for those in-game stories that occur as you're playing to really come into their own. It's certainly a great expansion and if if you're a fan and player of the game it's certainly worth your time and money and that is our Europa Universalis 4 Rights of Men DLC review thank you so much for watching head on over to gamewatcher.com for more info and we'll see you next time